I think it's about 10 years since I was last in this room, which makes me feel quite old. Um, but I'm delighted to be back for such a worthwhile initiative and to have the opportunity to talk to you all about two subjects I feel very strongly about. One is my work and the other is encouraging high achieving women to pursue interesting and challenging careers. I'm afraid I don't have any um, exciting visuals or props with me, which is poor form for a geographer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I just want to spend a few minutes telling you a bit more about what my work involves, um, how I ended up doing what I do, and what advice I would give to um, anyone who's considering a similar career. I was going to say I have the best job in the world until I heard my fellow speakers. <laughs> I think I should moderate that too. I have one of the best jobs in the world. Um, I'm a barrister, as you've heard. I'm self-employed. I work at a set of chambers called 106 Court, which is based in London. Most people's reaction when they hear barrister is to think of TV dramas like Silk. That's not quite an accurate representation of what I do. In reality, although we're all called barristers, that's our job title, um, the working lives of barristers differ considerably depending on what area of law you practice in. I practice in general commercial law. Essentially, I advise large, often multinational corporations and high net worth individuals um, on legal issues they encounter in the course of their business activities. I provide that advice either face-to-face -face or in writing. But almost always, um, the need for legal advice arises in the context of a dispute with another party. And when that dispute can't be resolved amicably, um, the parties resort to formal legal proceedings. Either those proceedings um, play out before the English courts, or they take place in front of um, private arbitral tribunals that can sit anywhere in the world. If that happens, and if legal proceedings are commenced, my role then becomes to advise on the conduct of those proceedings and to represent my client in front of the court or, or the arbitral tribunal, wherever that may be. So the court work and the wig wearing is really only one aspect of what I do, but I love all of it. And I, I'm not sure I can convey quite how much I enjoy it um, <laughs> or necessarily explain or articulate um, why it is that I enjoy, I enjoy it so much. Um, there are probably three things that stand out for me. The first is the sheer variety of the work that I do. One day I could be um, advising on a dispute between two banks. Another day I could be considering the meaning of uh, a, a contract in uh, an oil and gas context. The next day I could be looking at an accounting fraud in the sale of a, an IT company. It's endlessly varied and interesting. And my work is also, um, it tends to have an international element to it. So either one of the parties is a foreign company or a foreign um, individual, or the dispute relates to assets that are located abroad in another jurisdiction, which means that I've had the opportunity to travel um, in the past few years, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, going to both again this year, possibly Australia as well. The second standout feature for me um, is the intellectual challenge my work presents on a daily basis, whether it's uh, assimilating complex facts, researching um, interesting, sometimes novel points of law, thinking about how best to put my arguments in, in front of um, a judge. I've been doing this now for almost eight years and I can't think of a single day where I haven't had to use my brain, sometimes exhaust it completely, um, or where I haven't been presented with a difficult task. And for me, that was very important when I was looking at jobs. And the third and probably most important um, reason I enjoy what I do so much is the people I get to work with. Because the cases are high value, because they are legally and factually complex, I tend to work with other usually more senior barristers. Um, and in my experience, they are some of the brightest, um, most intellectually gifted people I've, I've ever met. And they have a real passion for what they do and for the development of junior barristers. I'm not sure I've ever been in a working environment where there's uh, which is sort of perceived to be a city working environment where there's so much job satisfaction um, and most people are dedicated to what they do. So I feel very fortunate to have found a career that's fulfilling um, and that I can honestly say I love. But I wasn't born wanting to be a barrister. Um, 
<laughs> Absolutely not. In fact, when I was sitting where you are now, I was convinced that I was going to be an investment banker. Absolutely convinced. So much so that I went off and I did an internship with an investment bank in the summer after my second year, when I should really have been writing my dissertation. <laughs> um, it all worked out fine. And um, I really did learn from that summer that I didn't want to be an investment banker, which <laughs> was positive. Um, but that's where reading Geography at Oxford came into its own, because um, I didn't draw a blank, um, having discovered that investment banking wasn't for me. When I started looking at alternative careers, I discovered the, the opposite. I discovered that I could actually do anything that I wanted. That's not to say that I apply the subject matter of geography on a daily basis. That's just not the case. But it's surprising how much geography um, you find in seemingly unrelated subjects like the law. I do quite a lot of energy work, oil and gas, renewable energy. And I found the energy industry much easier to understand with the background that I have compared to some of my colleagues. It certainly helps when you're looking at a, a contract that's been concluded in that sort of industry to know something, something about it. Um, but probably what's helped me most in my career is how I was taught to think and to reason during my time here. I'm not sure that even now people fully appreciate how well-rounded geography students have to be to do well. You have to undertake significant research tasks that involve independent study and thought and a degree of creativity. You have to conduct detailed and critical analyses of sometimes complex facts and theories. And you have to be able to write well. You have to be able to present your arguments or your findings in a clear, logical and persuasive manner. And I think as we've heard today, those are all highly valuable and highly transferable skills. Um, they apply in any profession, but particularly at the bar. So in my mind, there's no doubt that my time at Oxford gave me almost everything I needed to um, become a barrister, apart from the law bit. Um, <laughs> and I think that was most apparent, actually, to me, not, not when I converted to law, but when I started as a pupil in my chambers. Um, it felt very much like I was back at college. I was surrounded by bright, friendly, talented people. I was doing work that was challenging, but always interesting. And that's exactly how I felt when I was at Hartford. Sadly, um, despite feeling very at home at 106 Court, I'm not aware of any other geographers at the commercial bar, certainly female geographers at the commercial bar. And it's not just female geographers we're lacking. We seem to have a shortage of um, high achieving women full stop. And that's something I and a number of other women I work with uh, have made it our mission to change. And part of that mission involves giving students a better understanding of what it is we do. And I hope today has achieved that to some extent. But part of it also involves us understanding why um, young women in your shoes are being put off such a great career. I've given some thought to it and I've asked people who are at a similar sort of stage and common responses include, um, it's not a female friendly profession, it's so competitive I'll never make it, or it doesn't offer the same security as working in a large firm does. There's, there's no doubt that the commercial bar is still a very male dominated environment to work in. Most of the judges I appear in front of are men, um, as you heard Beth say, it's the same experience for me. I'm frequently the only female in course or, or in a meeting. There's also no doubt that being a barrister is at least perceived as being riskier um, than some professions. And it's hopefully not a, an inaccurate generalisation to say that women tend to be more risk averse than men. But to my mind, none of those factors outweighs the huge attractions of the bar the challenging work, the interesting people, the control over how much I get to do, um, which is one of the real advantages of being self-employed over working for a large firm and as, to my mind, sort of a, a cog in a much bigger wheel. I can't think of many careers that are as fulfilling and flexible as, as what I do. Um, and I, I know we've had some discussion about this already. I'm, I'm not at a stage where I can speak to balancing my job with a family but I know firsthand from colleagues 
um, that they manage a very successful and busy practice alongside being a mother and a wife. It's definitely doable. So my advice to anyone who's um, looking at the commercial bar or considering a similar career, if you're a woman, don't be put off by a male-dominated environment. Um, it is changing, albeit slowly, but it will only change if you make it. Um, and that's a message that I would really strongly convey. Don't be afraid, picking up on what some people have said already, don't be afraid to take risks, preferably informed ones, um, and having <laughs> spoken to people who've done a similar path. But it doesn't matter if you get it wrong the first time. It's rare for you to um, land on your feet the first job that you, you do, you love. That, that's rare. Um, and remember that risks are often accompanied with rewards. And don't doubt your abilities. Um, it's not a vote for arrogance, but <laughs> just a, a plea, especially amongst women, for a little less self-effacement and a little more self-belief. If you've made it to Oxford, someone has seen real potential in you and you just need to believe that yourself. Um, and if I've managed to put you off for the commercial bar completely, <laughs> I hope at the very least that you come away from today and from hearing all these inspirational women speak feeling as though it's a really exciting time to be a woman coming um, into deciding what you want to do with your life. Change is definitely a foot and there are some extremely interesting and rewarding careers out there if you just take a little leap of faith. Thank you.